All right, guys, we're going to talk about plum fragrances today. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while, although I didn't have a big collection of plum fragrances, but I have built a big collection of plum fragrances now, so I've got 20 here. It's a top 20 list. I'm leaving off some that I did not really want to feature here in this video. And no, we don't have plum japonais in this list. Unfortunately, I don't have a bottle. I actually wore that fragrance quite early on in my journey, around 2013. 13, I believe, is when I first got my bottle. And it was a large decanter bottle. It's pretty much gone. But guess what? I have a great alternative for it. And I'm going to talk to you about that alternative in the bonus uh, section. It's very inexpensive, almost a dupe of uh, Plum Japonais. So if you're curious to learn about plum fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, finally I get to do a plum fragrances video. Plum is one of my favorite fr uh, fruits to eat, but it's, you know, it is a favorite fruit. I don't get to eat much of it. And sometimes I do eat some prunes because I do like dried fruits quite a bit. And there's, uh, you know, plum listed in this list of fragrances in this video. There's also prune plums listed as well. So yeah, I do enjoy this fruit quite a bit. And in fragrances, it's interesting in fragrances. It doesn't add too much of a fruitiness, and sometimes it does, but there's there's a uniqueness about plums that's, you know, like not like strawberries or black currants or blackberries and things like that, or pineapples even. So those go really, really fruity, but there's a, a bit of less fruit with plums, if that makes sense. So in fragrances, they don't really stand out too fruity. Does that make sense to you guys? Is that what you guys experience with plums as well in fragrances? Do let me know, put a comment down. But why don't we go ahead and get started with the first fragrance. We're going to the house of Nishane. It's Vain and Naive, this one right here. Are you familiar with Vain and Naive? Very interesting fruity fragrance. It's not one of my all-time favorites uh, of this brand. That's why it's ranked at number 20. But it is pretty decent. It acts kind of fruity and ambery and woody as well with some light flowers thrown in. And then of course there's the raspberry in here along with plum. So there's pretty prominent note of plum along with the raspberry, as I said, rose, tonka beans, sandalwood, jasmine, cedar, and amber. So in the end you're experiencing a fruity, woody, floral, uh, amber fragrance. So it's vain and naive to start the list off. And and moving on to the house of Fre Frederick Mall. And this is a very classic fragrance from this house. In fact, it was created by um, Ed Edward Edmund Rud Rudnitska is what I should say. Edmund Rudnitska is a very well-known classic perfumer. He did a lot of fragrances for Dior. And he created Le Parfum du Terres a long time ago. And apparently his wife was wearing it until uh, Frederick Moll found out. And I believe that's why the fragrance is in this collection. So... It's a very, very vintage smelling fragrance. If you're into vintage fragrances, you definitely gotta check this one out. It does feature lots of plums, so it's fruity, along with cucumbers, so it's ozonic, a bit vegetal, watery, and then there's rose, melons, jazz vetiver, and patchouli as well. You know, like I said, it totally is a very classic wearing fragrance. It also reminds me of one of the Dior fragrances that uh, Edmond Rudnitska did. It kind of reminds me of Diorama. I think that's the one. There's Diorella, there's Diorescence, there's Diorissimo, but either Diorama or Diorella, I can't remember which one it reminds me of. But again, if you like the vintage thing with plums, definitely check out Le Parfum du Terrasse from the house of Frederick Mall. Then moving on to the house of Jacques Fat, it's uh, Rosso Epicurio. Here we get a, a very fruity combo with lots of flowers. And of course it features tuberose. There's uh, lots of flowers, as I said. It's a white floral bomb with kind of a red, purple fruitiness in the mix as well. So we've got the tuberose, there's lots of plums here, blackcurrant, there's rose, there's ylang ylang, orange blossom, jasmine. There's a little spice from Sichuan pepper and a little divana to add this kind of a contrast herbal aromatic touch. But it does feature lots of plums. It's a very fruity fragrance. It adds that kind of darkness that plums have along with the, the brightness of the fruitiness of the blackcurrant note. So Rosso Epicurio is at number 18. And then finally going to number 17 with Wesker's Eau de Mystique, this one right here. Do you guys know this brand? 
Uh, if you knew, if you know this brand, let me know. I did shoot a quick video of the brand at uh, Pitti Fragranza last September. If you are curious to watch it, go catch it. I've got a couple of videos on that house on the channel. But Wesker's Eau de Mystique is their first fragrance. It's kind of an ambery fragrance with honey. And then, of course, there's a frankincense here for a little bit of a smoky incense touch. And then, of course, the prune plum comes in. This is a prune plum for sure. It does have a kind of a dry characteristic, not necessarily a fresh fruitiness from the prune plum. And then of course you've got some neroli here, there's rose, there's blood orange, styrax, heliotrope, labdanum, and sandalwood. In the end it's a sweet, fruity, amber fragrance with woods and things like that. And of course it does have resinous touches. So if you like the darker take on the plummy fragrance, definitely try Wesker's Eau de Mystique. And if you don't know Wesker fragrances, they are very, very long lasting. They're very, very intense Exhale de Parfum concentration fragrances. So you've got beefy fragrances there. So up next, going to the house of Parfums of Marley, it's Cassili, this one right here. This is kind of in the shadows of Delina. I don't think it's as popular as Delina. Uh, I don't know. I think it is a pretty decent fragrance. It's definitely very feminine leaning with lots of plums. It's got that fruitiness and again it's the kind of fruits that's not overwhelming really fruity if that makes sense. But it does have plums in addition to the plums there's also red currants so it does get fruity. And then it has tropical flowers in there as well along with other flowers. So it's frangipani, tonka beans, vanilla, there's other floral notes, there's patalia, mimosa, rose, and sandalwood. Eventually it does dry down to a creamy sandalwoody touch. The whole fragrance in fact is is powdery but there's a creamy undertone there as well the mimosa flower adds a bit of a almondy kind of a powderiness uh, in this kind of a yellow uh, floral form but it's very very plummy and then also very fruity from the red currants and then the the, the tropical flowers as well so this is Castilly from the house of Parfums de Marly and then going to the house of Fortin Manle it's amber absolutely this one right here you know this is the older version of this fragrance. They have a, a they've redone their fragrances, rebottled and things like that. And I wanted to feature this one because it is an amber fragrance in the end. I did have a full review of it. I reviewed it back in 2017, I believe. And it is definitely amber with a plumminess. It's definitely got a major plum presence here. So it features plums along with black currants, rose, musk, amber, benzoin, cedarwood, vetiver, and labdanum. It's interesting. I'm seeing other fruits come up with plums. There's something that plums do to fragrance Fragrances that it also needs other fruits to kind of carry it almost kind of a thing if you haven't heard me mention notes there's always another fruit along with it if that makes sense because it this one definitely has that plummy presence and then also the black currant as well but in the end it's kind of a musky resinous amber fragrance which also has a woodiness as well so amber absolutely number 15 up next going to the house of Amarud it's Oud du Jour this one right here for a very very intense Oud fragrance contrasted with prune plum. Here we've got fresh and also dry touch. I get a combination of uh, the, the prune plum with its uh, freshness and then also a bit of its dryness as well, like a dried prune kind of a thing. But this is a very dark fragrance featuring Indonesian oud, the prune plum, black amber, there's olibanum, there's patchouli, there's gayak wood, there's Persian saffron and pink pepper. It's very spicy. It's kind of like taking the oud experience and not throwing in the rose, but throwing in plum to kind of like contrast against the, the the oud if that makes sense so it's very very plummy and also very very oody so those are the two prominent notes in this one if you like the idea of oud and plums together a bit of fruitiness and you're you know kind of getting tired of the rose and oud combo you want a breath of fresh air I'll definitely try the oud de jour from the house of Amaroud and if you don't know the fragrances of Amaroud they're all extra de parfum once again so very very long lasting if you're into long lasting fragrances that's definitely a house to check into for beast mode fragrances moving on to the house of Penhal Elegance. It's Halfetti Leather. My second favorite Halfetti fragrance along with Halfetti Cedar being my number one favorite and then Halfetti the original is my third favorite. Halfetti Leather is definitely very leathery with Udi. There's also smokiness and spiciness and then you've got that prune plum and I think they've done a great job with the color scheme of the bottle. I feel like it kind of matches because I, I associate plums with a maroon kind of a color and this gives me a maroon vibe so it kind of makes sense to have this kind of a color scheme for this but in the end it's taking Halfetti into a new direction and leather taking it into a leather direction and I like the whole idea of leather with fruits and in this case they're you know marrying the leather with 
with the prunes, but you do have a pretty prominent experience with not only the oud in addition to the leather, but also incense and cardamom as well. So Halfedi leather at number 13. So up next, going to the house of Olfactive Studio. This is Chambre Noir. Are you guys familiar with this brand? This was the very first fragrance I had bought. I've actually gone through a whole bottle, but I bought it back in 20. 13 here in San Francisco at Gump's when the brand was there for a while and then it was gone. But this is a great leather fragrance and once again it's leather with incense whereas it doesn't have oud like the last fragrance but the last fragrance was also leather and oud and incense and prune plum here. We've got the prune plum once again. Again leather plums together works really well and here we've got the smokiness from the incense as well along with patchouli. There's pink pepper, vanilla, violet and papyrus and with this fragrance you definitely notice the papyrus note. Uh, uh, it's really, really prominent here, but you do have that fruitiness of the plum. It's a dark fragrance, and of course, the prune plums or plums in general are a dark fruit and totally comes off like that. This is Chambre Noir from the House of Olfactive Studio, and that's at number 12. Next, going to the House of BDK, it's Tabac Rose, and this is a fragrance created by Julien Rasconet. I've actually got two fragrances that he created that utilize plums. You'll see the other one closer to the top spot. But Tabac Rose is a very unique chocolate tobacco fragrance in that it has lots of tobacco with rose and plums. The fruitiness of the plums is definitely prominent here and I feel like rose and plum together really blend really well as well. I've noticed recently with figs and rose and plums as well. I think I'm looking forward to finding a really prominent rose plum combo. But here in this case it's the chocolate and the tobacco along with the rose and plum. And then they've thrown in some patchouli along with some cinnamon so it adds some warm spice to the fragrance. Fragrance. eventually it becomes uh, ambery and woody in the dry down. There's a bit of freshness here as well. Fresh spicy from pink pepper and then also a bit of a citrusy touch from lemon. So this is BDK's Tabac Rose featuring uh, plums. And then finally, the latest, one of the latest fragrances that launched recently with plums, and I just did a review for this one. This is Initio Parfums Paragon at number 10. You know, it's definitely very plummy. This really has a lot of plums here, and it's an interesting combination with aromatic notes and also citruses. And then, of course, uh, there's that uh, Palo Santo here. And, you know, to me, I don't get a lot of Palo Santo in here, but I do get a lot of juicy plums. The plum is really, really prominent. I've ranked this list in the way that I've ranked my least favorite at the, the bottom of obviously and my most favorite at the top. So this is definitely ranked with the, what I like. And even though I really think this is one of the plummiest fragrances, I like the other plum fragrances a little more, but I think you guys might be into this one. It does even have a little trace of oud in here, not very strong, but it's definitely lots of plums contrasted with lots of woods and a bit of aromatics thrown in as well. There's a definitely smokiness here. So it's Initio Parfums Paragon at number 10. Well, I mentioned that there's two fragrances created by Julien Rasconet in this list. Well, I forgot that there's also two fragrances created by uh, uh, Christian Provenzano. The first one was Halfetti Leather, and then now going to the house of Lectimus London, it's Persephone's patchouli, this one right here. So this is a great fruity patchouli combo. If you like the idea of patchouli, this is a great patchouli. It's my favorite of the two patchoulis from uh, Electimus London, but here we've got that kind of dark fruitiness, plumminess from the plum note. But it is also featured with honey, there's cardamom, there's a bit of fruitiness from pomegranate, there's jasmine, there's rose and ambergris. There's that kind of two uh, fruits kind of a thing again. I almost feel like to enhance the fruitiness of the plums, they need to have more uh, fruits in here. I get more plums than the pomegranates for sure, but for me this is a fruity patchouli. It's earthy, not necessarily chocolate cakey, but definitely kind of a bit on the green side of patchouli. And of course, you've got that dark fruitiness of the plums here. Smells fantastic. It's Persephone's Patchouli at number nine. Moving on to the house of Gallagher Fragrances. This is Rosé All Day for a delicious gourmand take on uh, plums. And this is, you know, in here, for me, plums creates for like a baked plum experience, if that makes sense. For There's a apple crisp note in here, according to the notes, so it definitely has that uh, vibe. You do, t you know, have that kind of uh, feel and touch of the apple crisp where you're almost eating it. But they've thrown in honey here with the apple crisp, brown sugar, patchouli, the plums. There's metallic notes. There's rose, vanilla, labanum, and tonka beans. It's a delicious, ambery, vanillic, sweet, 
fruity and rosy as well because it's called Rosé All Day Apple Chris Gourmand fragrance. Really delicious. Rosé All Day at number eight. If you don't know that one, do check it out. Moving on to the house of Nuit Nomad. Do you guys know this house? Really a house that I'm really, really keen on that I'm going to talk to you guys about very, very soon. This is a fragrance called Ombre Kanjar and it's from the house of Nuit Nomad. This is an amber in the end. And it's also smoky and very, very fruity with the black plum note. And the black plum note really accentuates this kind of amber that kind of takes it into a light fruity direction because as I say, plums don't necessarily have a lot of fruitiness to me, but there's definitely a fruity presence. But it's black plums, labdanum, orris, sandalwood, benzoin, resinoid, leather, and vanilla. Yeah, it does get into a bit of a leathery direction and a bit woody as well, but it's definitely resinous amber with a fruitiness and powdery touch. Really delicious. This is Ombre Kanjar from the house of Unui Nomad. Let me know if you guys know that uh, particular fragrance that's at number seven. Or I should also say, if you know that particular brand, really a great house, very, very underrated, definitely need to check out. I will be doing a video on that house very soon, so stay tuned. Moving on to the house of Indult. Most people know Indult for Tijota, but they do have a plum fragrance, and it is a plum bomb. This is Isvaraya, this one right here. Do you guys know this fragrance? If you like plums and patchouli and jasmine together, it does get a bit indolic here with the jasmine, so it does have a kind of an animalic touch. But the fruitiness of the plum is so strong, and that patchouli is so earthy woody. It's plump fragrance. You really experience the plumpness, the juiciness, the almost succulent quality of the fruitiness of the plum in here. So that's why I've ranked it at pretty high, because it's definitely a plum bomb. Really, really fruity with the plum and patchouli earthiness, and then of course the indolic touches from the jasmine. This is a fragrance created by Francis Kirkjen. He created four or five fragrances for this brand along with Tijota. No one talks about Isvaraya, but definitely a plum bomb. If you're looking for a plum bomb, definitely check it out. But be warned, as I said, the, uh, the, uh, the jasmine in here is indolic, so it can get a bit funky and amalic. All right, up next, it's the second fragrance created by Julien Rasconet. It's from the house of Van Cleef and Arpels. This is Orchid Leather. Orchid Leather came out last year. Was it last year it came out? And I was impressed at how great of a quality it is. For me, it's a vanillic leather with the addition of plums. It's a great, great combination. And this is a very, very underrated house. Nobody talks about them. They do sell the fragrances over at Neiman Marcus, and I think they deserve to be hyped a little more, at least, uh, you know, spoken about. And this is probably one of the best in this collection because it's a great combination and Julia, Julian Raskinet has done a great job creating this fragrance. It's really, really delicious. Vanilla and leather together, super, super yummy. And there's plums and labdanum and cardamom. So spices and amber, fruitiness, but it's a dark fragrance. Of course, the bottle matches the darkness of this fragrance and it's a totally delicious uh, plum leather fragrance. So it's Van Cleef and Arca Ar Van Cleef and Arpels Orchid Leather is at number five. All right, up next, going to the house of MDCI. This is Sheeper Palatan. Do you guys know this one? A very ambery Sheeper fragrance. Very unique Sheeper fragrance. And I don't know if how I would categorize this as a Sheeper because it's just like a beautiful, warm, fuzzy amber fragrance. It's got that kind of musky fuzziness that you would you know find in a uh, musk fragrance, like a deer musk fragrance. But this is totally balsamic. Features loads of tolu balsam with galbanum. There's castorium. There's oak foam. There's prune plums, benzoin, hyacinth, and tangerine. So, so good. This is, I think this is created by Bertrand du Chaffaut. I could be wrong though. I'm totally drawing a blank who the perfumer is, but such a great fragrance. The plumminess is there not to be overly fruity and plummy, but it accentuates the notes and creates for kind of a resinous balsamic amber fragrance. And then you've got that galbanum note in here to give you that kind of green contrast. What a beautiful fragrance this is. This is MDCI's Sheeper Palatan. That is at number four. Up next at number three, going to the house of Serge Lutens, the very first fragrance I bought from Serge Lutens, dating back to 2010. This is Feminine Dubois. Feminine Dubois used to be under Shiseido uh, in a different bottle and then I I believe Serge Lutens was involved in the creation of that and then he launched his brand and moved the fragrance over here. Very, very plummy fragrance. Really delicious. Uh, I bought a bottle of this and I also bought my mom a bottle of this in the, in the old bottles, in the 50 ml bottles, of course. That was over like 11, 12 years ago. So it features cedar with plums, cinnamon, ginger, 
peach, cloves, violet, sandalwood, benzoin, and vanilla. The combination is really delicious. It really, really works all the notes. Cedar is very, very prominent here. Plum adds that fruitiness. And of course, you've got these warm spices and fresh spices in here. A bit of fruitiness from peach. There's that peach and fruit, extra fruit combo with the plum. And then of course, you've got vanilla and ambery touches with woods. Really, really yummy fragrance. If you don't know Feminine Dubois, Try it for plum experience, but also with cedar. The cedar smells really, really authentic cedary in here. And um, yeah, it's great. It does have the word feminine, but I think it's a very unisex fragrance. Feminine Dubois from the house of Serge Lutens at number three. And then at number two, going to the house of um, Atelier des Ors. This is Rouge Sarre. We've got dates and plums in here to, together, and it's a match made in heaven with lots of Peru balsam. There's vanilla, dates, plums, cinnamon, patchouli, guyac wood. Eventually it has some woody base when it's drying down, but it's very ambery and balsamic with the Peru balsam. To me, it acts like a fruit compote, but more with a dough touch, you know, like, like an apple crisp like we were talking about with the Gallagher fragrances, but with a more of a thicker kind of a doughy presence. It's just like a beautiful combination of baked fruits with like some kind of bready kind of cake crisp presence. Really a delicious fragrance. It's become my favorite fragrance from this house, Atelier des Ors. Super delicious and perfect to wear in the autumn and winter. Rouge Sarre from the house of uh, Atelier des Ors. That is at number two. And my number one fragrance today in my top 20 plum fragrances video was also featured in last week's boozy fragrances of uh, fragrances video in number one. It is Plum and Cognac from the house of Sense of Wood. Man, if you guys don't know this one, you gotta check it out. It's one of the best fragrances from Sense of Wood. I really love it and I can't get enough of it. Not only do you have the rum or the cognac in here, you also have plums. So it's a fruity, boozy fragrance with ambery touches and spices and of course vanilla, peru balsam, and cinnamon. Man, it deserves the number one spot. It's spot. It's really delicious plum fragrance. You know, if I had plum japonais today, it is discontinued by the way, and I'm gonna tell you about it in the bonus section, what you can get to uh, have as an alternative. That probably would have been at number one and this would have been at number two and everything would have been pushed uh back and then it would have uh, ended up dropping off number 20 that's currently on the list but man if you want a plum fragrance a boozy fruity plum fragrance a dark vanillic ambery balsamic spicy fragrance definitely try a uh, sense of wood plum and cognac definitely deserves the number one spot anyway guys thanks so much for watching today's video I hope you enjoyed this video on plum fragrances. It is not necessarily one of my all-time favorite notes, but I've been wanting to do a plum fragrances video for the longest time, for the longest time, and finally it's live. And I think plum as a note is perfect in the autumn as well. So here you have it. Let me know your thoughts on these plum fragrances. What are your thoughts? Do you enjoy the fragrances I featured in this list? Do you have a favorite plum fragrance that was featured here in this video? Or do you have a favorite plum fragrance that was not featured here? Put a comment down, let me know what it is. Other than that, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye. Are you ready for that bonus plum Japanese alternative? Go into the house of Athena once again. This is Smoky Plum. Yes, yeah, it does smell like plum Japanese. I've worn it quite a bit. I actually went through a whole 250 ml decanter and I love that fragrance. It was a very interesting combination with the kind of a smokiness and woodiness and saffrony touches with that fruitiness of the plum and that's what you get with this one. Features notes of saffrolene, plums, cinnamon, oud, vanilla, smoke, amber, immortelle, cognac, cypress. You gotta get this one if you're looking for an alternative or a dupe of plum japonais because you can't get that fragrance. I mean, you can probably find it but it's probably really expensive but this is a great, great fragrance. It's so delicious, guys. I'm gonna spray some on. A lot of sprays. Smells delicious. Smoky Plum from the House of Athena fragrances. Do you guys know this house? Let me know. I do have a link in the info box. You can go directly there and get yourself a bottle. And it's very, very inexpensive. Get two, I think. Uh, I'm gonna get a couple bo bottles myself to give out as gifts. Uh, I think uh, I have a few friends that really enjoyed Plum Japanese and I, they're looking for an alternative and this is going to be a great alternative. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.